Hello, and welcome to our new LinkedIn Live show, Between Two Moves Corporate Edition. I'm Carrie Minorik. I am a learning strategy consultant. And I'm Pam Martin. I'm Senior Manager of Customer Success here at D2L. Today, we're going to be talking to you about how to onboard employees while practicing social distancing. So remember, you can always comment or ask questions, and we'll try to answer them live. Um, if you like what we're talking about, we're going to ask you to comment below and share this with your friends and colleagues. Awesome. You know, Pam, this is something that has been weighing on my mind recently. With all of the information that we're getting around the COVID crisis and the switch from being in an office to work from home, there's a little bit of a gap, I think, in some of the communications that are happening on maintaining the flow of business. And one of the things around that is how are we in this new kind of new world that we're facing, how are we continuing to onboard new employees? I love that you're mentioning this and bringing it up because it's something that we're dealing with here at D2L. We have, uh, everyone is working from home now and we're onboarding remotely and virtually as well. So this is something that we're figuring out uh, uh, today. And this is really kind of an unprecedented time for, for us. And, you know, it's, it doesn't look like it's finishing anytime early. It's going to be here for a while. And, um, but what I really love about this is it's not just about what's happening today. I think that this could really change the way we think about onboarding longer term and, and the value and, and what can be done virtually versus what can be done and accomplished in a face-to-face -face manner. So I'm really excited that we're talking about this. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, this situation that we're facing right now, as you mentioned, is definitely going to be around for a while, but it brings up all kinds of possibilities for us to look at the things we're doing and start to really be creative and think about ways that we can do them a little bit better, a little bit more um, safely for our employees, and also really make sure that that experience is still engaging and still really valuable to the new employees and to our existing employees as well. Yeah. So for those of you who are just turning in, turning in? For those of you who are just tuning in, I'm Pam Martin and I'm joined by Carrie Minorik and we're talking about how to onboard employees while practicing social distancing. So Carrie, what are the first things or one of the first things that companies should be thinking about or paying attention to when onboarding during COVID or really any situation that requires virtual onboarding? I think uh, that's a, a really important thing to think about is the laying the foundation so that we make sure that whatever this house that we're building for our onboarding is built in a really strong manner. And one of the key pieces of the foundation of onboarding is looking at what is consistent across an organization. What kind of information does every single employee need to have access to so that we can really address those in a consistent and engaging in fun manner. And that kind of information includes things like the company history, the company values, things like policies and procedures as well that everybody needs to know when they start with a new organization. Yeah, I mean, I can see how those things are, um, when you talk about history and values, those things are a lot of storytelling. And I can see how, you know, um, it's easy to do that in person, doing that storytelling. But I think it could be really interesting to think about how you can accomplish that storytelling virtually. Yeah, absolutely. And this is one of those things where we have an opportunity here to really take advantage of the employees that we have and record some of their stories and record um, some of their experiences with the company to make that first engagement with new employees really exciting and a little bit more personal as well. And then it's also allowing us to make sure that that is a consistent experience across the board for all employees. Once again, for those of you who, do, who are just tuning in, I'm Pam Martin, and I'm joined by Carrie Minorek, and we're talking about how to onboard employees while practicing social distancing. The other thing that I think is some, you know, if we think about ideas about how to make this more engaging and personal is really, you know, when you're doing the company history, have an employee who's been there for a long time do a video to talk about the history and how it's evolved. Or even when you're talking about values, if you have those defined, you can have video vignettes of different different people talking about those values and how they've demonstrated them or how they've seen other people demonstrate them. Um, and the other thing that 
that's kind of exciting and you can see how that easily translates uh, translates to virtual and, and online but policies and code of conduct are not as exciting to get through do you have any ideas there yeah absolutely policies and code of conduct even in an in-person environment can be boring if they're not done well and traditionally yeah we've relied a lot on kind of print material where we hand an employee an employee workbook or employee code of conduct and say, you read this, take it away, have fun with that. But we have an opportunity now in the switch to, to virtual or online um, onboarding to make that kind of engaging and make it really fun. There's all kinds of tools that we have at our disposal in an online environment, things like gamification and, um, like mix and match or like a choose your own adventure to see whether or not you're really understanding the, the policies as they're laid out so that it's not just here's a book, read it, understand it, check the box and you're done. But you can make it a little bit more exciting so that they don't get really bored as their first experience with our, with our organization. Yeah, I love it. The idea of doing like a scavenger hunt, for example, would be so fun because you don't need to, I mean, ideally you're reading through everything so you understand it, but the real value is under is making sure that they know how to navigate it and find the information when they need it and as it's relevant as well. So doing a scavenger hunt in there to, to make sure they can do that, that's a really great and fun way for them to be able to, to be able to do that and add that gamification that you just talked about. Yeah, I love that. That's a great idea. And I would love to hear from those of you who are attending today and watching this, what kind of things that you're thinking about for ways that you can make some traditionally kind of dry information a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun, a little bit more involved so that we can all learn from each other in this process as well. Yeah, share that in the comments below. We'd love to hear it. Okay, so one more time, for those of you who are just tuning in, I'm Pam Martin, and I'm joined by Carrie Minoric, and we're talking about how to onboard employees while practicing social distancing. Another really important part of that is about making someone feel welcome to the team. There's a social aspect to onboarding as well. Absolutely, there is. You know, we talked about some of the core information that is um, pertinent to everyone joining an organization, but there's also a lot of information that a new employee needs that's more pertinent to their role. And that includes things like understanding who your teammates are, understanding who um, or how your role fits within the larger scale of the organization and who you have at your disposal that you can turn to in times of a question or need um, and really figuring out that network piece of, of the role as well. I really like that um, because as you mentioned, there's the social components, which is the network and, and all that, but then they need the process of how they do their job, the resources. Um, and I think also when we're thinking about onboarding, it's doing that evaluation of understanding between the company history and the role, what can be done virtually and what must be done in person. So doing that inventory of all of those things and then figuring out what what can be done, what can be accomplished virtually. And I think if people are creative and thinking about it that way, they can really challenge themselves to come up with some really interesting solutions. Yeah, I like that. And what you just said kind of triggered something in my head um, about maybe going from thinking about onboarding from the macro down to the micro. When we're thinking about the company values, that's really the macro level, the big details. And then we get into the role itself. And we're, again, thinking about the big details of the role. How does this fit within the organization? Who are my team members? But then you also mentioned processes and procedures and then resources as well. So understanding not only how your role fits within the organization and socially who you have that you can communicate with, but then also understanding what the role is and all of the resources that you have available to you and where to find them, making it really easy to find those resources and to find those people. And then also figuring out as well, as you mentioned, which one of those things needs to be in person, if any. In some situations, we might have onboarding experiences that are entirely done online, but there might be situations that arise that do have to be in person. 
Right. And I think the, um, if I think about how this applies in some of the, the jobs that are happening out there today, you know, I think about retail as hiring like crazy, um, fulfillment centers for online orders, things like that, right? So thinking about what parts of that role can be done um, virtually where people can do it from their home um, rather than having to go into a, 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 a a meeting room or a training center where they're, you know, very closely sitting with other people, right? So thinking about how, you know, jobs like that um, and how this can apply in, in those scenarios, I feel like in a, in a tech industry that feels very obvious, an easy transition or an easier transition to onboard people virtually, because generally there's some experience with that, but I think it, it creates different types of challenges when you're thinking about roles like retail or fulfillment center warehouse type roles. Yeah, absolutely. And that, um, when you were talking about that, I was like, oh yeah, okay. So when we are bringing people in for things like fulfillment jobs or retail jobs, you know, there is going to be that, um, element that does have to be done in person. However, we also want to make sure that our new employees are equipped with the knowledge of how they're expected to do that safely so that when they show up in person, they know mm -hmm. what's expected of them to maintain if there's social distancing that they have to maintain or if there's procedures around cleanliness or, or things like gloves or things like that so that they are prepared when they show up in person that they understand how to maintain that safety experience for them and their colleagues as well. Absolutely. Something that we touched on um, briefly earlier in our conversation was the idea of, uh, of the social aspect of starting a new job, because let's be honest, we're spending 40, 50, <laughs> depends on what you're doing. Uh, you're spending a, a majority of your time, your, your daytime hours with these people, right? And so you need to feel a sense of connectedness and belongingness. So yes, we want to get through the company history, values, um, specifics for how to do your job, but there's a real social aspect to onboarding that I think needs to be considered here as well. Yeah, definitely. Like I know for, for myself, my last onboarding experience here at D2L, one of the first things that we did was a team lunch. We went out and it was really mm -hmm. nice because it was informal. We got to know each other on a little bit more of a personal basis. And then once I had that kind of connection socially to my team um, and knew them outside of work a little bit, I felt a little bit safer in asking them questions that maybe I didn't otherwise, I wouldn't have otherwise felt safe asking them. So that's something to consider about, you know, how can we have that social interaction really clearly and, and easily available to new employees as well. And that's something mm -hmm. that I would love if anybody online uh, that's watching this has any ideas or experiences about how they have seen social interaction driven in an online environment through onboarding, it would be, it would be awesome to hear some of those stories. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's really more about establishing those commonalities like oh I have a dog I have kids I'm into ultimate frisbee whatever it might be right it's those social connections that make somebody feel part of a team and connected in some way but then also you know it's finding those people who um, maybe have experience that you might need to leverage or call upon um, and and finding those folks that you're going to be calling up and saying hey I'm trying to figure this out because as much as you want to go to your manager part of starting a new job is, is establishing a network of, of peers and colleagues that you can reach out to when you have questions or need some assistance or guidance Absolutely. And kind of along those lines as well, you know, sometimes when you're starting a new job, it can be intimidating and you might not necessarily feel comfortable reaching out to people just yet, depending on mm -hmm. whether or not you're a, like a super ultra extrovert or a little bit introverted, you might need a little bit of assistance with that piece of it. So making sure that the team members themselves also know that there's maybe an expectation that they should reach out to new employees and make those connections as well. You know, have yeah. like a once a week, 30 minute call. And it can be about, you know, how's the job going? How, where do you need help? Or just chit chat and, you know, I, I'm here for you. And really make that connection so that the employee isn't, it's not on their shoulders, the new employee to, to make that happen. 
Well, I can't tell you how many times I've heard um, when someone's joined my team and they say, oh, I'm so sorry to bother you. I know everyone's so busy. So it's really that they feel like, oh, everyone's so busy. I don't want to interrupt them or I'm going to be a burden to them in some way if I'm taking their time. So I really love your idea of asking a couple people on the team to say over the next couple of weeks, can you do a direct reach out to them? Because not only does it establish that one to one communication and relationship and development and growth, but now they have created kind of a team norm if you will around um around hey it's okay to reach out to me i'm, I'm always going to make time for my teammates or or colleagues if they reach out to and, and connect and engage yeah absolutely it's, it's kind of like the idea of mentorship but sometimes when we think about mentorship we get into this really tight square box of what mentorship is and assigning i'm a mentor i'm a mentee these are my expectations and mm -hmm. it can be a little bit limiting because we have that box around it. But we can use mentorship in, in some really creative ways, like just having those touch points where someone reaches out and says, I'm here for you. And I have all of these skills that I have developed in my experience here. And I can use those to, to help guide you through your new role. So really kind of clearly outlining for the existing employees that they should mm -hmm. be doing that to help new employees as well. Love it. Love it. And if you like what we're talking about, I'm going to encourage you to, to comment below or share the video. We'd love to hear this conversation continue on in the comments below. The, the last thing that we really kind of wanted to touch on here today and, and think about are, are the physical requirements. Yeah, I would say that, you know, it's, there's definitely another component here that we haven't talked about yet. And that is definitely the physical requirements, you know, and for every job, for every role, for every organization, these are going to be different. So we really need to carefully think about what is it that an, a new employee is going to physically need from us to start their new role and how can we really safely navigate that requirement for them. So uh, in, in a role like what we have, Pam, a lot of what we do can be done online in situations like this where we're on camera talking to each other and we get yeah. to connect. Uh, and in that case, then the employee is going to need a webcam, they're going to need their laptop, they're going to need to make sure that all of that is configured for them so that as soon as they plug it in, it's ready to go. So they've got their VPN. Yeah. But that's not always the case either, is it? Like there's there's no, not everybody working in tech. <laughs> Sometimes you might need to connect just for onboarding only. And, you know, then I think it becomes conversations of, you know, what devices are they going to need for onboarding? So can it be done with a mobile device? Do they have a tablet or laptop that they can use? Um, or do you need to consider loaning them a laptop to do the virtual onboarding? Um, and then there's what technology that you're going to use to deliver that, right? So, you know, um, thinking about web-based technologies and that don't require installation. Yeah, and that brings up another really important consideration in this is that we in onboarding provide a lot of very valuable information about our organization to a new, new employee. And mm -hmm. we also want to make sure that we're doing that in a way that's safe for our organization. So, you know, you, you want to make sure that whatever web-based technology you're using or if you're, you know, providing information that's available on a, a mobile device or however you make that available, that you do have some, some security features in place um, that allow you to share that information in a really safe way for your organization as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think the thing that is applicable regardless of whether you're, you're going to be using a, an online training or online learning for onboarding only, or if it's going to be part of your larger role, is really um, ensuring that they're supported throughout that. So do they have, you know, do they know how to contact their help desk and are they getting regular check-ins from, from a technical perspective to make sure that their setup is happening? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as you said that about getting their setup happening, and um, that kind of triggered in my head that, you know, we also need to think about is this going to be short term? Or is this going to be long term for them? Are they going to be only doing their onboarding from home, and then everything else in a physical environment? Or is this going to be their, their new norm? Are they going to be constantly working from home? In which case, we also need to start thinking about, you know, providing, um, guidelines around ergonomics and making sure that their home office mm -hmm. is set up so that they're physically not only safe but also healthy as well 
So if we've not ever had a work from home uh, experience for our employees before, that might be something new that we need to look at. And you know what I think is really interesting as I reflect on everything that we've talked about here is the idea that onboarding virtually has been happening for a long time. There are some companies that have a lot of experience with it. They've been doing it. And now that um, it's becoming um, a standard for a lot of organizations, I think it provides a lot of good insight and puts a lot more focus and thought into what that overall experience can and should be. So I think so from some organizations, it's been like, oh, here's your laptop and here's your login. And, you know, um, if, you're, if your manager is at, you know, a main office or another home office, it's been kind of um, informal uh, in a lot of cases. So being very mindful, the benefits that you're doing right now and thinking about how you're going to be approaching this can be applied and will benefit your onboarding pro um, program long term. So beyond yeah. just this COVID-19 situation. Yeah, absolutely. This, is, this situation is presenting a really good opportunity for us to think about long term growth as well and how we can really leverage this going forward once we potentially go back to the office and you know using a, an online learning approach for our employees going forward should anything like this ever happen again or some other who knows what happened that we're ready yeah. for yeah you know yeah. i saw a, a meme the other day that was very funny about um did your transformation of your technology happen driven by your ceo driven by your cto or driven by COVID 19. <laughs> and i think that <laughs> really good opportunity for us to really start to to think about our approaches and to really fine-tune and really advance our approaches as well so that is pretty love it not all the time that we have um, again we'd really love to hear from you guys and understand a lot more about what you're doing and what kind of experiences you have so that we can all learn from each other as well We'd like to invite you to tune in for our next episode on reprioritizing company goals amid COVID-19, where we'll be talking about the challenges faced by companies experiencing increased demand and the impact to continually moving the company forward. So finding that balance between the reactionary of I need to deal with these things, but then also keeping the day-to-day the -day business moving forward and some of those company goals that you set out at the beginning of the year. Yeah, and remember, you can sign up for notifications so you'll never miss one of our amazing episodes. And if you liked this episode, like it and share it and send it out to your network. We'd love to see this whole experience grow. Terrific. Thank you to everyone for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.